We are live already. Good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's nice being here today. Uh, special welcome to uh, this month's edition of the Family Life Today show. And it's such a unique day. We're celebrating all our children today. It's Children's Day today. So happy Children's Day to all our children all over the world. And we pray that the peace of God will rule their hearts and guide them in all things for a fulfilling life. Uh, let, me, let me take the music off for now. <laughs> okay, okay. Thanks for coming once again. And so to mark uh, this special occasion of uh, Children's Day 2022, I'll be giving out five copies of my book, Dear Bella. It's a surprise, right? <laughs> I didn't get it out there. So this is going to be for the first five people to join. Yeah, it's actually, it's meant to be a surprise. So that's why I did not uh, include it in the broadcast. This is going to be for the first five people to join, and uh, it's 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 meant it's uh, it's my own children's day surprise. <laughs> so for the winners, you are going to give it to any young lady, young girl around you, be it your daughter, your niece, your nephew, because it can go to anybody as it is. It's not for you, Mr. Ribisala. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for joining once again. So today we are looking at a topic on parenting. How far is too far? How far is too far? And, and we have a very special guest who is highly experienced in issues like this on the show today. She's in person of uh, Mrs. Ofonime Basi. Hope I pronounced the name well. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine you, you okay, did well yeah okay yeah. thank you very much for coming we appreciate your coming on the show we appreciate it it's a great honor we appreciate it thank you very much thank you god bless thank you greatly you. thank you so much thank you thank you I'm glad so, to be here. For, I'm for all the work you're doing so well done oh. <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much thank you Mrs. Ofoni Mebasi is a certified practitioner of family systems engineering. She's a parent and teens coach. She's the author of Beyond Childbirth, and she's also a marriage counselor. She's passionate about helping parents build a beautiful relationship with their children, especially teenagers. No wonder we had to bring her here today at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, without becoming their enemies and yeah. vice versa. She works with and prepares singles for a blissful marriage as well. She helps married couples develop strategies to maintain a loving, peaceful, and intimate relationship. She's a regular guest to radio and television shows where she shares insights on issues relating to marriage, parenting, and family life generally. She also has delivered talks on several online and offline platforms, including churches and schools. She mentors a group of singles and married via the New Tribe Family platform. She also impacts lives through a weekly Wednesday diet via her social media handles where she shares from her wealth of knowledge on issues relating to parenting and marriage. She is married to her best friend, Mr. Basi Epo, and they are blessed with two children. Join me to make welcome, Mrs. <laughs> Basi, once again. Thank you once again for coming on the show. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. We are glad to have you here too. So we are starting on our topic on parenting, how far is too far it's important to look at this you know topic of parenting as we are celebrating our children today 
so we can raise whole and sound children. You know, the family is the bedrock of the society and products of the family, children from families, they are majorly what constitutes our society and determines how our society becomes on the long run. So it is very, very important that we get parenting right. It is very, very important and critical. So that's why we are looking at um, this topic. And before I continue, uh, from the next episode, we want to move to YouTube and we'd we'll love to know your preference. Uh, so please kindly click uh, the link I'll be dropping to fill uh, a survey, please. I would appreciate it. I would uh, drop a link now. Kindly click to fill a survey so we can have your opinion on, on, on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, our very first question, what is parenting? Who is a parent? And then what are the uh, important skills required for parenting? All right. Thank you so much for that question. Um, I'm going to come, I'm going to answer that question differently, you know, from, I'm not okay. going to like come and give you rules. This is what you should do. This is how you should walk. You know, this is how you should keep your head. It's going to be different. So who is a parent? For me, I feel is a parent, I know, let me not say I feel, a parent is one who brings forth, who brings forth or who nurtures and raises a child. Bringing forth here does not necessarily mean Am I echoing? A bit, a bit. So I think I I prefer to use my earpiece, and that was why I was okay. Asking. Okay, okay, okay. It was it was all right initially, but yeah, not so. But I'm yeah. beginning to hear myself echoing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just give me a minute. Okay. All right. Is it better now? Am I still echoing? Yes. It, it, it's clear now. It's it's very clear. It's okay. very clear. All right, thank you. So uh, to become a, to be a parent, a parent is one who brings forth. But I want to say that one who brings forth, who nurtures, or who who raises a child, it mm. must not necessarily mean someone that actually biologically produces a child. No, mm. that's not that's not what it's all about. You may have children, and they are not they are not from your loins, but you can if you have the ability to bring forth the hidden talents or the hidden giftings, or you have the ability to make that child live life at their maximum level, then you are fit, you're qualified to be called a, a parent. Now, who is this parent? A parent is not mm. a tyrant. A parent is not the lord and master of all or the mistress and the, you know, and the, and the dragon in the home. No. A parent mm. is a servant leader. A servant leader. Now, if you, if you understand that, then you understand that there are some times as a parent, you have to stoop to learn to add in order for you to bring forth the best in your child. So you, you, you as a parent, you are a servant leader, although you brought forth this child, but with patience and with awareness and with the, and with the trends that are going on around you, you subject yourself to learning so that you can bring the full potential from your child that you're raising. So you are, one, he's a servant leader, and two, he's, he's also one that brings forth. All right, now, he, he is that individual, or she's that individual that would do everything to bring the best in your child. Some, when, it's, when we see some children, we say, oh, how I wish I, my child could be like that. But the difference between you and that person that ha, that you know you are looking about and you're, you want to be like maybe the child or like you want to be the parent is that one person a second time to observe the unique giftings and talent of that child and then also walk towards magnifying those areas of strength and minimizing the areas of weaknesses. So parenting involves a lot. It involves you as you ask what are the skills. First skill, observation. Observation. And this observation for me goes in two folds. Observation on yourself as an individual. What are the things... I think I'm still echoing. I don't know whether it's from my end. Are you I echoing? Am so. I, echoing? I, don't think so. I think it's okay. okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So observation comes for me from two perspectives. One, on myself. Observation of myself first. Okay, I want to nurture another human being. 
uh, from all that I'm living, uh, the way I'm living my life, am I capable of caring for another per, another individual? So that's the observation. So as I look inwards, I reflect, are there empowering, you know, um, ways, uh, empowering systems in me that will bring forth a child, that will help me nurture a child to, um, to as in nurture a wholesome child, not just a child, a wholesome child. When I not think about that now, after that, now observation also on the part of the child. What are the things that are unique to my child? You know, I love what PF said one time when I went to take the um, the um, PF, I mean, press for when I went to take the um, out of box parenting course. There is one thing I will not forget during that class. He gave us a plate that contained several types of seeds and he asked us to identify which what those seeds were we had the mess seed we had a whole lot of things but there were some seeds that we did not know what they were and he now told us that even him he does not even know what that seed is and he likened parenting to you being a farmer that you have a series of seeds or a lot of seeds now you cannot assume that seed like the bean seed is going to function like the mess seed or the mess seed is going to function like the mango seed, or the mango seed is going to function like maybe the pear seed. All you need to do is that as a parent, you observe, what kind of seed do I have? I ask question, is anyone that has seen this kind of seed before? Has anybody read this kind of seed? How did, the, what was the process? Did you have to till the ground? Did we just have to throw it away, uh, you know, on the surface of the soil? What, okay, even when we now, so is this, it suitable in a swampy area is it suitable in a dry land so that for me for me was um was um, um what mind-blowing because we have children and we just assume that the way we were raised is the way we're going to raise these kids we do not know that even though we have four children born to us the four of them are four different individuals with unique talents with unique giftings your principles may be the same but you have your approach will have to be different for these children so this number one skill for me is observation Observation, the next one is now good modeling. Good modeling. See, parenting is modeling. Whatever you do not expose your child to, your child will not know, is alien to that child. So if, you, if whatever it is that you want to see your child do, then you have to make sure that you're modeling it. So after observation, good modeling. After good modeling, what? I will call, I will say discipleship. Discipleship. So you see that in a parent say, I want to control my child. I want to break. I want to clip the wings. That's not the right way to go about it. Discipleship. What is discipleship? Follow me. I'm going to make you. I'm going to train you. I'm going to instruct you. If you falter, I'm not going to curse you. I'm not going to make you feel bad. I will probably stoop low, help you, pick you up from that place and help you, you know, go path again so for me that is discipleship parenting also involves discipleship and then what again dedication parenting is not something that you put just like the bible says for those of us that are christians you put your hand on the plow and look back it is a lifetime commitment it's going to take you a lot it's going to even though you know people say oh don't lose yourself but hey let's be honest with ourselves that the moment a child is in our space we are we, are, we have no other um, job than to be dedicated to that work before us. So dedication is key. Dedication is what is going to drive you when you are down, when you see that child going through stuff, you will not give up on that child. You walk that child through. And then the willingness, now the last point now, the willingness for you to adjust who you are to suit your child. So if you realize that your child has gotten to a stage that he needs a, a cheerleader, you become a cheerleader. If it gets to a point that your child needs a coach, you are the coach. If it gets to a child a time that your child needs a friend, you are a friend. How flexible, how adaptable, how teachable, how can you adjust yourself to bring forth the best in your child? So for me, those are the basic skills when it comes to parenting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And from what you just said now, how do you get to uh, identify the different stages and the needs that comes with it? Like you just said now, maybe the stage that the child needs a cheerleader, the stage that the child needs a mentor. How do you get to identify the stages? Is, is it uh, attached to particular ages? 
Well, there, there, there's actually, there, are, there are actually ages. I think there is, um, I think um, there is a, a moment that you act like when their child is born, let's say from zero till about three or so, you are a scout. Now, what's a scout? You're looking out. What are the things that interest this child? What are the, what are the things that, um, what are the, what are the things that, uh, what are his talents? What are her unique talents and gifting? So you begin to look out. And then when you now look out for that, for that at that point, you now begin to teach. You now become a teacher, begin to become a teacher or an instructor as, okay, I've identified this. This is how it is done from that stage. You move from that stage to a stage where you become a friend to that child. You now, because you have to be involved in that child's life. So you become a friend, you are interested in whatever he or she does. You're also interested in his or her friend because at that time, you cannot go and build friendship when a child is already a teenager. No, you start early become a friend to that child people some parents will say oh i cannot be friends with my child but i think there is nobody that i don't believe that there is anybody that you want to have a cordial relationship that you know first of all be friends with them so you how about your so what so what is a big deal with your child you have to be friends with them at some point you become what, a mentor to them at some point you become what a mentor to them you are modeling whatever it is you're careful to act to model to show good modeling to your child and after a particular point, to become a coach, when that child becomes, you know, a, you know, a coach, when that child is become getting to the teenage, you're, you're coaching, you're not, you're not more like, you're shouting, you allow all the things you've thought, you now watch to see how that child is going to, um, um, how that child is going to live his or her life based on what you have, um, what you have um, taught them. And at some point, you now become their cheerleader. All through, as from that teenage year up, you're cheering them on, you're like an anchor to them, you're supporting them. So those are, it may be, it may not come in that, you know, like that particular person, but I believe that okay. as the need shows okay. up differently, you'll be able to identify at whatever stage of their lives that you would have to tweak your, your, your parenting style or culture to suit your child. Oh, wow. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there, is, is it too late to start? Is there any time that it's too late for parents that were not aware of, you know, this kind of information? They were not into this kind of knowledge before. Now, is it too late to start? <laughs> any time? You, know, they, you know, there's an adage that we normally say that the best time to have planted, to, you know, for one to have planted a tree was what? It was years ago, but the next best time what is, is now, all right? So um, if the truth of the matter is that, yeah, the truth of the matter is that if you do not start early, there are going to be hurdles, there are going to be challenges along the way, but you cannot give up. You cannot say, oh, I did not start. I, I'm children are teenagers now, so do I go back? You just, the fact that you're teachable and you're willing and you're willing to make it work and you're willing to do so, like I said, in the best interest of your child, it is not too late. Before I, 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 I got knowledge or I got knowledge, wisdom or I, I became, in, I started parenting intentional in 2017, I was a tyrant. You know, I was a tyrant. I remember that when I now knew, I went to class and I worked in class for three days. Ooh. And my child was quite young, you know, so the now the, I think one of the activities they asked us was go and, you know, call your children and apologize to them if you had done something wrong. I think mm. my son was about seven years or so. And so I get back to my hotel room and I now pick my phone and I call my son and I call, my, you know, I call my children. And I, my daughter was much younger. My daughter is two years younger than my son. So I called my daughter and like, hey, Mamisha. Oh, mommy, I missed you. How are you? And I go ahead and like, hey, Mamisha, if I had ever done anything bad, mommy, I know mommy must have been very hot tempered. I've been giving you the backhand. You know, I've been doing things to try to reset your brain. And um, I think I am wrong. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> exactly. I apologize for all those times I yell a lot, you know. And my daughter just said, okay, mommy, it's fine. I forgive you. And then I now get to my son, and my son took a deep pause. He, he, he waited for a while before he could now tell me, I forgive you. Oh. And that even broke me the more. Now, like I said, how old was my son? He was around seven. Or, yes, he was seven. No, he was around seven or thereabouts. 
So people would think that, oh, a seven-year-old child, what, what do they know? But right from that moment, I came back to them and I told them, you see, you see now, hold, um, hold me accountable. Anytime mommy is going off, you know, the script or is going off the radar, call mommy back. Tell mommy nicely, mommy, you are doing it again or something. And then that was when we now introduced the family, the open day in our homes where I was, I had to ask them, what is it that mommy does that you do not like? And the first question even my husband asked me was that, Amy, are you ready to hear the truth? <laughs> my kid stood somewhere and looked at me. And I said, okay, if you cannot write it, if you cannot say it, you can put it down on, in, in writing. And I said, if I don't write it, say it, and my kids watched me. You know, and I said, don't worry. My first grading during, my, during the open day, I think it was a 3 over 10. A 2 over 10 or a 3 over 10. But I was willing to let them correct me. I, they held me accountable until I moved from, I think, a 3 to a 5 to a 7 and then to a 10. And then today... You see me work with my kids. You see me do the things I do. And people will think, oh, maybe, you, maybe I knew it very early. Oh, I started. But wherever you have identified that, you know, you've done wrong, you can start from there. It's, it only depends. And if you have hurt them, it's important that you talk to them. You apologize for the things you did, not do, you did not do right. Like be vulnerable to them and let them also help you. And while, and mind you, one thing with kids is that they are going to be, re they'll release those information in bits and watch your behavior. They'll, the next time they misbehave, they'll watch to see, will you come and say, hey, now you know, after now you will say, I'm shouting. Hey, now I'm talking calmly. Exactly. So you have to be willing to go through that, to submit yourself, subject yourself. You're not, you're not permitted to defend yourself. You're not permitted to give excuses for your behavior. Listen to them. And it's most likely that if they see you making a, an attempt, they will also make an attempt to get better. Exactly. So, yeah. Wow. So, so wow. it's not too late. Not too late. <laughs> Anytime you wake up, it's your morning. Just that you may have to do more work. More work than more if work. you have started earlier. Yeah. Great, 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 great. Thank you. So it was in the the accountability thing that actually helped you to get over yelling as well. Yes, accountability. Hey. And uh, I, I had to, you know, my mother used to tell me one thing. Ah, are you going to lose this kid? And in my mind, I'll be so upset. Can this man just understand that this, he would not ask about their children and it will get me really upset. So, but, you know, so as in, so it, because they are children, but come to think of it, as parents, sometimes we are shouting, we are yelling over expected behaviors no bad behaviors expected behaviors so how what are the expected behaviors if your child is between the age of zero to four just like you a baby a baby picks up a pen everything to everything that the baby finds what would the baby do the baby takes to the mouth so will it be fair for you to start smacking the baby no listen from your mouth why are you putting this in your mouth you this child at that state that is an expected behavior everything will go to the child's mouth when the child now begins mm. to walk, he will explore. He will go, he will turn, turn the place upside down. He will explore his environment. And then you're, you're saying, this child is scattering things. What kind of child is this? That is an expected behavior. Now, depending wow. on the way you relate with your child, if you're, you notice that your child begins to lie, know that it's an expected behavior for that age because that child does not trust you enough that you can handle his or her truth. Oh. So, so there are certain things that are expected behavior. It will only be a problem to you if you have a, a teenage child. As in a teenager, you have taught that child well. And then that child now is beginning to lie. You have put things in. But then you can now say, hey, this, is, this has moved from an expected behavior to maybe a bad behavior. What can I do? Where, where can I get it working? So what are the things that your children are doing that are expected behaviors can you differentiate between an expected behavior and a bad behavior that is one of the things we should know because most times we punish our kids for just being children we shout yeah. on them for okay, being we children. Stand. Exactly. <laughs> they're shouting that they're scattering your house whereas even you as a human being if you sit quiet for two for five or ten minutes you are uncomfortable and these children are meant to explore the environment you tell them sit down concentrate just like we tell you that concentrate is just a word 
have you do you yourself as an individual do you know how to concentrate do you appreciate me as in meditation do you know how to um subject your mind to a particular thing and you want to force it on your kids when you've not taught them so please let's be guided they're expected behaviors and wow. they are also wow. the, um, bad behaviors yes ma'am wow thank you very much so there's a lot of work to be done on the parents and not even the child now and this brings us to the next question it says, What's the relationship between our parenting styles and how we were raised? Is there any link? Uh, of course. <laughs> we, where, where do we derive our parenting styles from most times? I think this would be <laughs> set us free. <laughs> yeah. The truth of the matter is this. Parenting is reflective. Parenting is reflective. Now, if you, if you understand that, then you'll be more conscious of the things that you do. So let, so let me give you a typical example. You see a mother, or maybe as an adult, there are certain things your parents did not like. So let, I'm going to just use a very simple one, which is use, the use of sarcasms. What are sarcasm? As in sarcastic statements. That thing that maybe if your child tells you, mommy, where do I keep this pen? You now tell, come on, put it. Come on, put, come on, put it on my head or put it in my nose, you know? In your mind. Now, do you know that if you try that thing with the children of this generation, they don't even understand. The children of this generation will actually bring it I want to put it on your head. Are you not like, can you imagine this? That's sarcasm. They do not understand why you're That's being sarcastic. Exactly. Now, let me shock you. Your parents may have done that to you. You did not like it. But you now felt, I will not do it. And unconsciously, it, it just shows up. It just raises up its ugly, its ugly head. And your child comes in and sends me to ask him, Mommy, do you want to eat now? Maybe that child sees that... Um, it's quite late. And you're like, no, I don't want to eat now. I want to play. I want to sleep. I don't want to eat now. And then the child now says, okay, I thought we were going to eat now. Let me go. And you say, my friend, will you come back here? What can you be asking me? You saw it somewhere. Probably you vowed or you had sworn to yourself that you're not going to do that. But you see, these things in us, unconsciously, you are soaked in it. So it will, be, it will show up. So parenting is reflective. Now, you're, you're hating a particular bad behavior or you're hating a particular parenting pattern, is not a solution. You're making a vow it will never happen. It's not also a solution. It is what? Intentionality. How intentional are you to, as a parent? I used to tell parents, I list it out, even before you start having kids, write out everything that your parents did that were okay. Put it on a, a, a plain sheet. Write out all the things also that your parents did, I did not like. Those are disempowering patterns, right? So you have empowering patterns and disempowering patterns. Now, on your own, now sit down and create a pattern, a parenting pattern or template that will work based on those things that you picked from both your parents and the things that they did not do well, but tweak it to suit you. That way you're already conscious. You, are, you have made up your mind. And from time to time, review it. Don't do it when you're believing God for the fruit of the womb. And when the baby comes, you dump it and say, oh, I cannot hurt my child. Review it and do so with your partner. So you cannot hate. You cannot just begin to hate things and expect that automatically you're going to fall in line because um, you hate it. You are going to do much more than that. You're going to be deliberate. You're going to seek interventions. If you realize that for some reasons that it was traumatic, to you, you must seek healing. From healing yourself, you will now know a better approach to teach that to your, you know, to your children. Then you now can now create a template to raise a wholesome child. Unless you just want to raise any child, but if you want to raise a wholesome child that is that is um, happy, that is responsible, that is thriving, then you have to do what I just said. So our parenting styles come from four basic factors, which I'm going to list list now. Four basic factors. Your upbringing. How were you brought up? The way you grew up, which talks, which I said is, is reflective. How did your parents raise you? So your upbringing. What were what how what what um what were the methods? Did you were you brought up in a in a, with a scarcity mentality? So you could not eat as much as you wanted. Um, what 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 is it that happened? Was it were you brought up in a in a in a place where? You could not express yourself, and so you were growing up, you're timid, you cannot associate, you cannot make friends, you cannot trust, and you're wondering where it came from. Trace it is most likely, you know, it will be most, most likely be linked to your upbringing. So your parenting style can come from your upbringing. Two, your environment. It's just like, see, if you carry a white cloth, 
and then keep it on a table and then people are that people are drinking on it people are people that carry oil are dropping things on that white cloth what will happen eventually that that cloth will be messed up the same well, thing with parenting the same thing with parenting so the environment one of the things that it's important to consider if you want to there are certain environments that are okay for you to live as an individual as a, an adult and you may not be negatively influenced but the moment you begin you know you are going to have a child you have to take them out of such environments this is already a, a topic a big topic on its own so you cannot mm -hmm. say you want to raise a royalty in an, an in an assumed slummy area or in an assumed environment where foul words are used where maybe a motor park is close to you or maybe a station where people are shouting abusing people you may do that to your child maybe try to teach but because of where he or she has found himself those things will rub off so sometimes our parenting also is from their environment how did people around you discipline their children how did how what when a child you know messed up the bed or what's the bed was there like um uh, and um a, a loudspeaker in the compound that say hey you just come and carry this thing today and now don't be look at you all oh, she yeah you yeah, person or whatever so you now saw it and then you felt that maybe now and this is enough you thought that that worked for that parent automatically you also start shaming your child as a correction tool or as a corrective tool which does not work so your environment can also influence your parenting style another thing is that is your significant emotional experiences what happened to you as you were growing up did you did, did, did you have loving parents but along the way maybe you lost one or you lost both and you had to go stay with somebody were there things with well, were you so afraid of your parents that certain bad things happened to you and because of that they did not they did not read your body language they could not come to your head they could not rescue you they could not help you out and so because of that he left a dead you lack trust you're traumatized and because of that you are in that bitter state or in that hurtful state you now say hey my children will never go through this and you find out that you're being too strict you're being too careful you cannot allow them you do not want to release them you do not trust anybody even when the whole world is on you it's most likely you're going to tell that part based on that significant emotional experience that you encountered or that you experienced now the last factor now which we are there is the reason why we're talking about this is likely you may have had a bad upbringing or you had a great upbringing had a bad environment a significant emotional experience but another thing that can also help you with your parenting style is your is your exposure or the acquired learnings you have had all through life yeah the, the learnings you have picked up from one stage or the other so these four factors will actually now make up your parenting style which one okay am i going to hold on to what happened in the past using my upbringing environment or as it was in the days of my parents am i going to reinvent the wheel am i going to adjust based on the level of knowledge and exposure that i have to suit the current trend so these are the factors that actually determine how you parent your children wow thank you very much thank you so much this is mb on its own <laughs> <laughs> this is MBA. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, uh, okay, uh, people talk about routines a lot for children. What does routine do to them? And how can parents get, what's the benefits of routines? How can parents get their children into routines? Uh, when is the best time to start, <laughs> as I asked earlier? Yeah. Uh, uh, the the best time is to start as early as possible like i said see everything about parenting i'm i, I i'm still going to go back that parenting you know, i listened to um, you know i was on a show on wednesday and um, um one of the my fellow the, the co um, guest in the program which was uh, mr tai Joaquin labi said something do i'm always preaching that parenting is modeling but he said that parenting is follow me and i will make or mar you follow yeah. me and I will make or mar you. And it was so profound to me. Like that is, that, is, that is that so that's just the that's just the summary of the whole thing. So talking about routines, how structured are you as a parent? How you know? So because my children are always open to tell me when I go wrong. I remember I will come and say, "Don't do this, don't do this," but they will tell me. You know, something happened recently. We were supposed to travel and i was supposed to go drop my kids my husband shared this with me after my kids had gone 
you know, had gone back to school. So I'm going to share it. I tell my children, when you come back from the holy for holidays, start, you know, give pace yourself, maybe unpack your box, clean up your box, send your clothes, wash your clothes, start packing. Let me have a list of whatever and pack earlier. Don't wait until the night before we are traveling to drop you before you pack. Now, something funny happened this, um, this time. This is the last time my kids went back to school because, of course, we also have to travel with them to go drop them off. So this particular time, I did not pack because I had a lot of work. There was a whole lot of work. And, of course, I know in my head I was just going to go and spend like two days. So I, in my head, I can, my box is always there. I just know what I'm just going to put in, just my, my undies and then my clothes. And my husband had already done his own packing. Now, from what my, my children told, my husband told me that in the morning when I went to bed, because I, was, I had a lot of work, I slept late, and then I now woke up late. While I was not having my bath in the bathroom, my daughter asked my husband a profound question. He said, Daddy, you people tell us to pack. Why is mommy doing her packing this morning? She tells us how early, you know, why is she now packing? Why is it that she's going to bath now and then she's packing? My daughter is like that. And I'm sure she could have, she, my husband could, my daughter could have even asked me that question if she were to be in front because she has asked me several times. My husband now had to explain to them, but he also came and gave me feedback later. Hey, Amy, see, these children are watching more. He said, and also, so how did you ring yourself? He said, oh, mommy knows that it's just about two or three clothes. And mommy packs quickly. Almost all her things are in there, but which is actually the truth. So get me right. It's not as if he was lying, but it's the truth. I already had this thing sorted. I just needed to just put him, maybe throw in my tooth, my tooth, my toothbrush and other things into the box and I'm off. But that's when my husband said that thing, I was like, wow. So we have kids that will actually even challenge you. So you want to talk about structure. How structured are you? This my same daughter was my it was was when she was in, in, in primary school. I wouldn't sleep until about 5:30. Then I wake her up and start shouting, finish up, let us go. One day we were driving on the road to school, and she just said, Mommy, well, you know that if we wake up early, I'll not be late for school. She just told me that. She said, Mommy, but you know, if we wake up early, I'll not be late for school. And that was when I now said, okay, so how do you want? She now told me when she was going to wake up and my daughter was not late. Wow. So you're talking about structures and routines. You as an individual, wow. know that you have children and you know that children are going to take a longer time to wake up or to do things. How early do you consider that and factor it into your schedule or your routine? You just wake up and then assume that they're adults. So they're just going to do things like you five minutes are finished but in the brush their feet. And when they, do, when they do not do that, you start yelling. So routines are to a greater extent dependent on you as the parent. Do you have a structure in your home? Now, apart from having structures, when they are much old, when they're growing older, do you also involve them? Because I, like me, I would love to, as when my children started, my, my son started transitioning to a teenage, his teenage age, and then my daughter was also getting older. In my house, I would say every Saturday, let us clean. Let us clean. My children came to me one day and said, Mommy, I want to have enough sleep on Saturday. Can we clean on Friday? Can we clean on Friday? We'll clean on Fridays. So Saturdays, you can do whatever, but we will just want to sleep a little, sleep a little much longer and enjoy our Friday. And that was when peace came in my home. So I, now, I will now tell them, what do you want to do this week? They'll tell me, okay, this week we want to sweep upstairs and downstairs, maybe for this week. Then next week we want to do the mopping, but it was... They, they were part of creating that structure, so it worked for them. Oh, oh, oh. So if you want to start, if you want to have a structured home, how structured are you as a parent? What structure, what templates do you have? If you're saying that they cannot settle into routines like studying, do they so you see you study? Or it is when they want to study that you now come and put on that, tele, that, tele, that um, what is it called? I don't, what is that thing called? Um, that people people watch is it tell there's something that Netflix. people like Telemundo or things or Netflix or whatever it is. If you want them to study, they must have seen you live a disciplined, regimented life. Then they'll follow suit. So they will, they will not study. They will not struggle to study. They will not struggle to do other things to get in on their chores. They will not struggle with timing. If you are uh, if you are modeling that to them and and starting early to do so. People wonder how my kids can do so much. My son was already making meals from 10. People wonder, how funny, how did he do it? 
my but the moment my son had indicated interest that he want that he was excited he wanted to go to boarding school that was when he was about about um about um, nine no, eight years old and my daughter was six so i now said okay you want to go to boarding school you're not going to have the washing machine you're not going to have a lot of things when my son started by eight my daughter was following suit by six so by the time my so by the time my son got to school, my son was now wondering why can people arrange their books? Why can people wash their clothes? Why can people do this? Why are people's parents parking for their children? Why can't they arrange their boxes? Why can't they do because all these things I had done it earlier? So people would now come and just see my children. Hey, oh for the you have tried though, your children are so mature. It didn't it did not start today, it did not start the moment I made up as in I said, Oh, they are going to school. It started much earlier. So when it comes to routines. When it comes to the way you do things in your home, if you can start on time and model to them, they have no option than to follow suit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So everything lies on the parent. It's a lot of work for us. Everything is dependent on the parent. The results we get, what we see our children doing is more or less our report card. Yes. Thank you. Report card. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, there, there, there are lots of issues, you know, that we have with children, such as lies, um, aggression, tantrums, sibling rivalry, studying, and mm. then, you know, the latest one being technology. <laughs> yeah. How should parents handle all these issues? What are the do's and don'ts for uh, technology especially? And how can they train their words effectively for, for a good use of technology and screen okay. time all right so i'm still going to but still going to point us to modeling in your home so you, you talked about aggression aggression is also children were born like you have everyone was born like a clean slate or like a crystal clear water whatever level of pollution or purity that you experience is as a result of your handlers or the people that engineered you so in I had married to my husband. I was wondering how my husband would be so upset, would, can be upset, but he'll be talking very calmly. He will not shout. He wants to discipline my children. Just say, come here. You did this thing. That was wrong. This is what you should do. He will not shout. But me, I will shout. <laughs> and, and he will call me and say, you will call me one day and say, you have high, high, you have high blood pressure. And the thing will get me upset. I'll be so angry. Why? My husband did not understand why I was being aggressive. I want to discipline a child. I just want me to just call the child and talk to the child. I'm shouting. Now that I'm talking, and I'll be talking, moving from, I can talk for 30 minutes. The child is not even in my presence. I'm still talking. So one day, I picked my, I think I've shared this on my timeline before. So one day, I told my kids, go to sleep. They went to sleep, but I now heard them laughing in the room. So I tiptoed to the door. I told them, it's your bedtime. Go to sleep. They said, okay, mommy. And I said, if I hear Pim, they now said, okay, mommy. Few minutes after, my kids were still shouting and laughing. I now decided to tiptoe to the door. They now tiptoed to the door. They now, they were now like, hmm, you will not sleep now. After mommy will come and say, if I hear Pim. And they were now laughing, mimicking me, everything I do. Oh, come here. Look up here. Do, 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 do. As at that time, see, since I was at the door, I had to, I could not, I did not, I just came back from the door, called myself to order. <laughs> because they're replicating exactly what I do. And I said, let us do now. After mommy will come and tell us that we should do like this. After some day, I, I just, I when I say, mommy, when I showed my husband, my husband said, I've been telling you, but you did not hear. So it's you're hearing from the husband's mouth. So what am I saying? <laughs> what am I saying? Your children, your children will not know aggression if you're not aggressive. Your children will not under your children may have, you know, may have what is it called disagreements with their siblings, but if you have a favorite child or they can sense some form of favoritism, it's going to breed envy and it's going to. It's going to um, come and it's going to, what is the word? It's going to degenerate into siblings' rivalry. So, how do you relate with both of them? Whether one is smart in your, in your thinking or one is not as smart, whether one is a boy or one is a girl, whether one, do, like, how do you do it? 
when I have people saying, oh, I have a favorite child because of how I suffer to give birth, to be honest with you, I can't even relate it. Like, and I ask my kids most of the time, so who do I love more between both of you? Just to cross check and they say, ah, mommy, you love all of us the same. And I'm like, I'm on try. I'm glad that even my husband, you know, would ask them. So sibling rivalry will not come in if you are loving them equally. Aggression will not show up if you learn how to manage. Parents are responsible for sibling rivalry too. <laughs> exactly. Or maybe they know, because, because if they notice that you tend to tilt towards one person, they'll begin to have envy. They'll want to be like the other person. They'll begin to feel, why are you always siding this person or not? Now, if for any reason you're giving more attention to a particular child because that child has some special needs, it's important for you to take them and explain to your other children why that is so. So that everyone is on the same, is on the same place. If there are other things, and, are, and based on the personality of your child, and of course the learning style, you also know how to tweak it and who you are going to spend more time on, but you have to try as much as possible to make it, to make a blend. Talking about um, gadgets. Gadgets for me, it depends on what you want to use, what gadgets is being used for. If you notice that your child has a trait of, of you know, fiddling with equipment, with um, um, internet, no, has a lot, that can be a sign that you're about to produce another Mark Zuckerberg. Now, rather than saying in this house, no internet, in this house, no gadget use, you can supervise. You can allow them to use it, but you supervise it. And you can also put measures in place. There's the family link. You can devise means. You can know how to regulate that. What they are but if you are, yeah, so, but if you now feel, oh, they should know, I have talked to them. You leave your modem or your Wi-Fi on, no things in place to check, no talk about, you know, cyberbullying, no talk about use. You don't, you know, um, check up from time to time your children are going to be engrossed. They're going to pick up whatever. Even you as an adult, sometimes you just want to pick your phone for five minutes. What happens? You end up spending one hour. So how much more a child that, is, that it wants to explore? So it depends on you, how you go about it, the boundaries that you set, the things you put in place. You can actually regulate the internet use. And you too as a person, how are you? Are you, are you, are you addicted to it? Are there times you, everybody puts gadgets away and just concentrate in bonding time is the way they see you ask that they are going to follow suit when it looks at and also it also depends on the season or the timing that sometimes that they may, they would want to use those gadgets more because they're studying for their exams or for a competition you must also be sensible and sensitive and flexible to adjust to the need of your child at that moment and not just putting rules so for not about rules don't do this put it off by this depending on the unique conditions or situation in your child's life you should you'll be able to look for a system that works for your child or for your children thank you very much thank you very much so instead of making rules it's just better to adapt you know adapt. It, exactly adaptation is is the word yeah. <laughs> okay thank you yeah. thank you very much. We are having a really nice time today. Okay, so how far is too far? What is the thin line between discipline and inflicting pain? <laughs> Do you believe in the use of rods as people often go overboard? What is that discipline that actually works? Wow. So for me, um, discipline that works is um, discipline that works is dependent on your child as well. Okay. I, I like sharing from my experience, but however, I am not, I am not in support of the rod of this, you know, the rod, whether the broom, the belt, the backhand, the backlash, the hunger, the pistol, I'm not in support of that because it has not, it did not produce good results, to, you know, it did not, um, it made, it made people fearful. Even the backhand I talked about did not give me. Now, when I talk to my children, when I talk to my children, when I behave, I, I relate with them, I am more comfortable with the outcome I have now as that, as compared to when I was doing certain things from ignorance. So, like I said, I have two children, and two of them, the way I, their behavior, their behavioral transformational code for both of them are different. There is one that. The moment you just call my daughter, the moment you just sit her down, and I just, you know, tell her, this is, and I'll ask her, who are you? And she tells me who she is. And I said, this is what you did. Do you think that this thing is a reflection of who you want to be? As I am even saying it, she's already breaking down. I have one that is like that. So I will now, I will now tell her, okay, if you were in my shoe, how would you have handled this? Being that I have taught you what to do and you did, what happened? She may go ahead and say, I was scared or I was this. 
So that is for one. Now there is one that I have that as you're telling him, don't do this, he's asking you why. Oh, I can do it this way. I mean, what if we do it this way? You're telling him one thing. So it depends also when it comes to disciplinary measure. Like I said, it depends on, for me, the peculiarity with your child. I have a child that if you withdraw, there was a time that withdrawal of privileges was working. But recently, my daughter, I realized that it's not working. So you tell her, if you do not do this or do this, you're not going to have access to this, you're not going to have access to this. And then she comes up and tells you, I don't even need that. Mommy, I don't need that. I don't want TV time. I don't need TV time. Yeah. And you now tell her, but you should. I say, but mommy, you told me that if I wanted so, so, and so, so I don't want it. Maybe not today, maybe some other time. She will not want to try to negotiate with me. So now imagine that now, and I also have a son. I have a son that right from when he was born, he has never, he has been very happy being in his own company. So you tell him time out, he'll be, he'll be excited that you are sending, you're sending him to, uh -uh, you gone. You get into that room, you're thinking his remorse, he has, he has scattered everywhere, dismantled things, he's laughing as you're opening the door. So like I said, what is, what is peculiar to your child? So my son, you cannot tell him uh, uh, what people call naughty corner. Though there's a talk that no, no corner is naughty. There are some children that, like my daughter, if I tried a naughty corner thing on her, it will look as if I've stripped her of everything. She does not like that. She does not like the fact that she's secluded, that it looks as everybody No. So like I said, what works? Because there are certain things you may, I can come here and say, do this, do that, and you go and, and, you go and do it. Even some people say that silence is good. But do you know that is how you can give your children a silent treatment and your children grow up not being able to resolve conflict? Not being able that when things happen, they don't talk about it, they just keep quiet and walk away and expect it to sort themselves. And you're getting angry, forgetting that you use silence as a disciplinary tool that is affecting them badly. So there are a lot of ways you can go about it, the choices and consequences, the, the, the um, withdrawal of, of um, privileges, um, speaking to them. Um, wait, there are a lot of ways, but you work, look for what works for you. I will not come here and give you rules. I just shared that from my experience that my two kids are different. I use different approach for both of them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So you have to discover it for yes. yourself. There's no, you know, uh, straight, straight jacket rule for yeah. <laughs> discipline with regards to children. Each child is unique on his or her own. Yeah, that's what I was trying to explain. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, our time is fast, but we'll rush over just like two more questions, please. Okay, okay, so how can we uh come effectively connect with our children? And briefly, you can just briefly must list uh the major skills required okay. to equip children to get them ready for life. Okay, um, for me, for you to connect with your children, start early. Start early enough. You know, right from, it's so funny. I, 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 like I said, I did not know certain things I was doing that I was intentional, intentional about it. But now when I go out and my kids are all, you know, in a space, huggy, huggy, lovey, dovey, people, oh, oh, uh, when I, right from when I was breastfeeding them, right from, you know, when I, 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 I established a connection with them, now I was interested. My kids will come back. Even now that my kids are in boarding school, there is what we do in our home. It's called journaling. So they're in school, but every day they are journaling whatever is going on in their lives. The moment I go to pick them, oh, they're like, mommy, look at my journal, look at my journal. And I tell them to do that so that when they come back, we can go through the day. What are the things that they were not comfortable? We talk about it. If you are going on visiting days or things, you'll, be, you'll see how, mommy, you've not wrote about my journal, you've not read my journal, read, read it so that we can talk about it. Now, this started way back, right from when we were in school. They'll come back. So what happened in school today? Did you make a new friend in school today? Who is your teacher? I now go to their class. I almost know their teachers. I know almost all their classmates. I am. So you have to be interested. Not interested because you want to like, okay, they said I should do it. But you're genuinely interested. That is how to build connection. You try to read their moods. Sometimes this is how I look at my child. And my child tells me I'm okay, but I know I'm not okay. In fact, in our house, if anybody says, uses the word I'm okay, they are not okay because it's not acceptable. You have to name your emotion. I'm excited. I'm tired. I'm this or that. So how early did you do that? When your child is telling you I'm fine, is he really fine? Because of the connection that you have built. So be genuinely interested in things that concern them. And also be vulnerable with them. 
Like I current, I recently um, failed at something and I had to call, my kids knew how that thing meant to me. I had to also share with them this thing that we're believing God for, this thing that we, I put uh, all my resources in it, it did not really go well. I want this to be a lesson to you. And they were not like, we they, they were the ones encouraging. Remember when, we, remember when we were in primary school? Remember when we changed school? This certain thing, same thing happened and you encouraged us and we went through it. You too can go through it. Now come give me a hug. And it was so heartwarming because now they are the ones passing the same to me. So be genuinely interested and then be vulnerable. Now, what are the skills? Let me quickly rush through. What are the skills that you need that your children, that you need to effectively parent your kids? Observation, I've already talked about it. You have to be observant. This observation I'm talking about will know when that's I, I, I mean skills, skills for that children, skills for children themselves. Okay, skills, skills for children. With children with. Okay, okay. Skills, you have to start early to teach them self-management skills. Self-management. How can they manage themselves? How can they, how, like that, that which, which still boils down to structures like that I talked about. So if they go to a place, how can they on their own without somebody shouting and yelling at them, how can they manage themselves? Time management skills. How well can they do with time? When they, how important is time to them? How can they manage with, with, um, with, with um, time? Critical thinking. Let them learn to think on their own. Critical thinking. Don't answer everything for them. Don't give them solution for everything. Let them learn to think on their own. Leadership skills. Leadership from the home. How responsible are they? Discipline also. How disciplined are they? Now, commitment. We realize that recently some people tend cannot stay on a particular course. Teach your children commitment, resilience, and grit. Things will happen, but if you want to say something so bad, you have to stay committed to it. Now, negotiation. Some of us grew up and then because of the upbringing we had, we did not know how to negotiate. We zoned people off in our lives. And today, those people, those people that we zoned off maybe are highly placed and we cannot connect with them because we did not know how to navigate or we don't know how to deploy social skills to you know, navigate, navigate that situation. We had a particular man and so we cannot negotiate. We cannot, we don't know when to compromise. And then um, 12, we are still maintaining our value. So negotiation skill, because your children at some point, when, when evil is brought to them, they would have to negotiate to stay firm in, on the right path. So negotiation skill is okay. Then organizational skills. How organized are they? If you, if you are not organized in your home and tomorrow you'll be you're the president, it will show, it will most likely show in your cabinet or the things how you go about things. So organizational skills is key. And then mentoring, subjects to mentoring. How can they, how, how can they, how are they on the, when, as when it comes to mentoring? How can they subject themselves to mentoring? That is also what will help them to also know what to do to people, how to mentor or pass on whatever it is that you have taught them to other people. Um, adaptability skills as well. How can they adapt? Should they go to a different environment? How can they adapt? Will they now start, you know, be behaving like, oh, ah, I cannot copy this. How can they adapt? How can they get to a place, even though they have good values, but they can subtly adapt and then still infuse their learnings wherever they find themselves? And then um, I also have here creativity. How creative are your children? If you teach them creativity on time, they will learn to be creative problem solvers. They'll not just complain like every other person. They'll, they'll realize that they're solution providers and they would always try to create solutions where they find themselves. So this is just a few active listening skills, paying attention, decision-making skills. There are a whole lot of skills. I can't say it all here. I listed all of them, all the skills in my book, Beyond Childbirth, in case anyone wants to get it. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So you can get your copy from her. Yeah. What was yeah. social media handle? Ofonime Basi is here, okay. and then okay. Instagram Basi underscore for Ofonime. So. Okay. 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 So you can reach out. So I can send her DM to get your copy of this book to you know they get to uh, be able then to uh, exactly know what these skills are about and how to go about uh, helping your children develop and grow these skills. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we're running up with this um, question that I'm, I'm really passionate about. <laughs> okay. I find it weird, uh, though I thought it's a thing of the past, but I still see it so very much, it's still very much around, and I find it weird when I see parents okay. insisting on a particular career choice for, this, uh, choice for their children. 
is to me it's just like arranged marriages how far is too far how can you effectively guide your children in the choice of career or the line of purpose which is most important we yeah. hear parents as i say this is because i wanted to study but as i could not my children must do it or some will insist that their children must stay in their line of career or business in order to preserve their uh, business empire or something it does work for some people for real yeah. Yeah. yeah, it does work for some people, but not in all cases. I have one instance instance now where of grown-ups, uh ch grown-up children from the same family, you know, where their parents try to insist on a career path for each of the children. Only one of them complied, but now wishes uh he or she never did. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, that repelled their parents' um, suggestion, they are regretting too that they did not study the course. Is a yeah. two way thing. What's the yeah. balance? You know, how far is too far? You know, those ones who they are wishing they had followed the path, you know, that their parents recommended for still in the same family, same parents, <laughs> the same yes. children. Okay. Yeah. So not get into this kind of decision. What's the best way for parents to help their children to nurture? We, we told us already parenting is about nurturing, you know, to get on a fulfilling career path without imposition or leading them wrongfully and which they will regret eventually later in future thank so you so you already you already answered the question the, the truth of the matter is this the truth of the matter is that everything must be done in the best interest of your child everything you are doing whether it comes to it must be done in the best interest of your child someone may say okay what if i think that the best interest of my child is to force this another pointer you must look out for is it's not, it's not bad for you to now say, okay, come and take after my business, take after my company. There's nothing bad about that. But if you notice, is your child truly happy? Passion is about it. Is your child happy on that path? Is that, are you seeing that child in a state of excitement? If that child is not in that state of excitement, why are you, why are you doing that? Imagine that it happened to you. Someone forced you. Even... I used to do this even with meals until the point I realized that I don't even eat everything. So why do I force my kids to eat? What there are some meals that I don't even eat, but I will, so I, will, I will excuse myself. But with them, I'm forcing. And then you're wondering which one is better. You're forcing that child to eat the meal, and then the later the child later throws up, or for the child to eat something that will stay in the stomach. So the same thing with their career. It is not bad for you to have good plans, but whatever it is you want the child to do, does it align with the traits you have seen? Does it align? You must have an open mind. That's why living your life, you must know that your child has a life of his or her own. You're just there as a guide. Your child may come and tow a different path. There is this um, um, poem by Cahill Gibran on children that said that though they come from you, they are not of you. They, you, you are just there. You, you, are just, you, you are just like a vehicle that brought them. They have their minds of their own. They can do things just, just to lead them around. And if you're not careful, they'll start rebelling and going against you. But if, not, but if you can guide them well, they will be honest to tell you. And, oh, this thing does not work for me. And learn to listen. If you genuinely want your child to be happy, you will not force them to doing whatever it is. However, to, to strike a balance, there are some children that they need a little push here and there. So you should also know, like I said, what's the, like I know that there are some children that are just, just like sitting on the edge, just like being on their comfort zone. They don't want to push, but a little push from you can bring the best. And they may not even understand that you're doing the best for them until it shows forth. Identify whatever you're doing. There should not be friction about it. At your heart, at the back of your mind, you should have empathy and wish that should this thing have been done to you, how would you feel about it? So that's the way to go about this situation. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I know our time is fast paid, but I have one, you know, my, my issue most times, especially without food, the instance of food, you, you know, Mention. <laughs> yeah, exactly, is that when they go out to people's house, will they now inconvenience them when people cook or they don't like, they will tell them, um, I can't, I don't eat this. That's just, that's a part. How can one handle that? <laughs> the reason why most times I force them is because I feel, okay, when you go out to another person's house and they give you this thing, it will not be convenient for the person to tell, when you tell the person, I don't like it, I can't eat, and then you make the person prepare another thing for you. So how can that be taken care of?
for me it's in two ways so let me give you an example just like you're talking about my daughter anytime she takes anything like custard anything like pap she throws up we have forced her we have done everything possible she throws up so in fact it, I, when you see the way it happens i don't even but every other person eats so if you now want to have me in your house and i am the parent i think it also depends on the way of presentation i can say hey my kids are coming over please um my daughter normally throws up with pap but this is what she likes she likes um conflicts it, it wouldn't be a problem i have packed the conflicts in her bag or please or something i believe that if you do that genuinely not because you're trying to spoil the child but because like i said which would you prefer that child throwing up and throwing up or you know or that child eating and being happy or just like you go to the just like me i don't like that so i don't like seafood but once i get into a restaurant and i'm seeing prawns and things i'm three i'm asking my kids who were my children are saying give me i'm three so why would i now go to a person i know that what is not good for me but i now say no i must learn how to eat these prawns i must do i have tried it and every time it doesn't sit well so for me i think flexibility if you start early and then children are you know you've tried and they cannot they don't really like a meal you don't have to force when they go out they have a choice either to eat very well at home before they go to someone's house or if they go you cannot back up with whatever you have so, so it's not mm. as if you're inconsiderate but you're now bringing children to your to your to your to your house and then you're, you're just stressing them if they can also agree with you and eat anything i have a son that eats everything it's not a problem but like i said children are not the same i have one that yeah. cannot eat yeah. everything yeah. Sure. Yeah. sure sure thank you thank you thank you thank you please let's give her a round of applause thank you very much thank you thank you thank you it's been enlightening has been enlightening on today's episode of the show thank you so much thank you so to the winners to the winners of my book Debel, i will be reaching out to you we have i have uh, i had someone earlier you know uh someone uh, your names have been taken down so i'm going to reach out to you on how we can get the book across thank you very much mrs bassi thank you for your time thank you for the uh, insights wonderful insights you've given you. us today we appreciate thank it. Thank you, everyone, for coming on the show. We appreciate you. Have a, a, a lovely weekend. And regards to all the children, happy Children's Day once again. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 <laughs>